light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'm Silver! The land surrounding Jackson's Corners was hilly. It was broken by many ravines and pitted in countless places where prospectors had scratched for gold and abandoned their efforts. It was dangerous ground for a fast gait, but Tonto was on his way to the camp of the Lone Ranger. It was already after sunset, and the Indian hoped to join his masked friend before dark. Get him up, scout! Tonto guided the paint horse skillfully. There was a small, treacherous spot that he failed to see. Steady, scout! Steady, follow! Steady! Oh! Oh! The horse regained its feet, but Tonto lay motionless where he had fallen. Sensing that his master needed help, scout turned and galloped swiftly toward the Lone Ranger's camp. Meanwhile, the shrewd-faced lawyer in Jackson's Corners, known as Opportunity Smith, leaned back in his chair while Squint Adrian laboriously read a legal document. In witness whereof, the parties have hereunto set their hands and seals the day and year first above written. Me and Jim Blake signing these lines at the bottom, eh, Lawyer Smith? That's right. You sign in front of witnesses, and you've got a legal partnership in the gold mine. <laughs> Half interest in a gold mine for five dollars ain't bad, eh? Well, Jim Blake wanted a grub stake. You gave it to him. I get half of all he finds, and he does all the work. <laughs> I guess he didn't expect to strike it rich when he borrowed that money. You'll notice, Squint, that I, uh, I inserted a clause to the effect that if one of you dies... The other gets the whole claim. I seen that. Might not go with Jim Blake. He's got a wife, you know, Smith. He might not want to let me have everything if he should die. Well, if he objects to that paragraph, we can change it. Maybe he won't even notice it. Maybe he won't. He's a trusting critter. Hmm. You going out to his house tonight? Yeah. He's invited a few friends in to celebrate his uh, strike. I know. I'm invited. Oh. My team is waiting right out with me. We'll get the agreement signed and witnessed. Are you ready? Uh, just a minute, Lawyer Smith. Well? There's another paragraph in this paper. I savvy why everyone calls you Opportunity Smith. What do you mean? You got it in here that you get 10% of the gold. Well? 
No matter what Jim Blake says about that, I won't sit still for it. Why should you get 10%? Legal counsel? My eye. I know what you charge for drawing up a legal paper. I'll pay it in cash. Why should you get 10% of everything? I won't agree to that. Oh, yes, you will. Like fun. You'll agree to it and persuade Jim Blake to do the same. Before I do that, I... You'll hang for murder. What? In Washoe County. How did you How know? How did I know about the murder of Pete Parker? <laughs> I've known about it for some time, Squint. I make it my business to know about people. I knew you were Jake Arnold before you'd been in town three weeks. And you kept still all this time? The reward wasn't large enough to tempt me. You just waited till there was a chance to collect in a big way for what you knew, huh? I awaited my opportunity. Opportunity Smith. Now, Squint, shall we go to Jim Blake's party? No, wait. Let me get this straight. You get 10% of our claim and you keep still about me. Is that it? As your legal counsel on a substantial retainer, I'd hardly turn you in for murder. Bring that document, Squint. My surrey's waiting. All right. Come on, Opportunity Smith. Come on, eat up. Eat up. It'll be dark by the time we reach Blake's house. Yeah. You've been quiet, Squint. What are you thinking about? I'm thinking about you, Opportunity Smith. I'm wondering if you'll be satisfied with 10%. For the present. Meaning you want a bigger slice of the gold mine when you can see a way to get it. Is that it? Well, if, uh, for example, something should happen to your partner and you became owner of 90% of the mine. What do you mean? If something should happen to Jim Blake. I was just thinking, that's all, Squint. Just thinking. I... What's the matter? Who? Who? Why are you stopping? Look, someone lying on the ground. Hey, it looks like an Indian. Yes, it is. Is he dead? I don't know. Oh. Well, he oh. moved a little. Yeah. I... You... You help? What happened to you? A horse fall. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be any broken bones. Uh, me hit the head. He's got a bad cut here on the head. Can you stand? Uh, me, me try. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a hand. I... Uh, oh. 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 Huh. He's fainted. What do we do about him? I'm wondering. I uh, might as well leave him here. We Just get... a minute, Squint. There's no way you can make any money out of him. We've got to get to Blake's with the agreement. Squint, we... huh? this Indian might be a killer. Why do you think so? He might have a grudge against your partner. Well, why should it he? It would be he very did... convenient if this Indian killed Blake after the partnership agreement was signed. Very convenient. You might even make a heroic effort to save Blake and kill the Indian, but just too late. I begin to savvy. Help me lift him to the Surrey. He may prove useful. Opportunity Smith. darkness gathered over the Lone Ranger's camp, the masked man and Dan Reed prepared for Tonto's arrival. I'll bank the fire, Dan. That'll be ready when Tonto arrives. Right. Golly, I hope he admits this is a good cooking fire. It's hard to suit him. Yeah, wait. Just a minute, Dan. A horse? Yes. Tonto's. He said he'd be here by dark. He's right on time. There's something wrong. What do you mean? Two feet are different than usual. Oh, golly. Here he is. He Riderless. Did... Something's happened. <laughs> Steady there. Steady, Scout. Easy. Where's Tonto? Dan, hold the bridle. Right. Steady there, boy. Steady, Scout. Look at his knees. Yes, he's had a fall, a bad one. Then Tonto must have fallen with Scout. Steady, steady there, Scout. He acts like he's trying to tell you about it. Dan, I'm going to follow the back trail. But it's dark. Do you think Tonto you can see it? follow a direct route from town. Besides, there'll be a full moon in half an hour. How about Scout's bruises? They're not serious. Keep him here with you. Right. Yeah, you'll hear from me as soon as possible. All right. Steady, big fella. One silver! Jim Blake and his wife lived in a small cabin some distance from town. The house was bright with lights and gay with laughter. The last to arrive was Sheriff Darwin. 
Sorry I'm late, Mrs. Blake. Oh, you're not late, Sheriff. I'm so glad you've come. Can't stay but a few minutes. I just wanted to stop long enough to congratulate you and Jim. From what I hear, you got a mighty fine claim. Oh, I'm so happy for Jim's sake. He's worked hard. Hi, Joe. Where is Jim, Mrs. Blake? Oh, he stepped into the bedroom to sign an agreement with Squint Adrian, a partnership agreement. Ah, he did, eh? A lawyer Smith and a couple of men for witnesses are with them. Seems like a howling shame that Jim has to split his claim with Squint Adrian. Oh, he doesn't mind. There'll be plenty for both of them. After all, Sheriff Darwin, Mr. Adrian grubstaked Jim. To the tune of five dollars. Well, it meant food to keep us from starving. If it hadn't been for that five dollars, we'd have had to leave without finding the gold. And how is it they're just signing the agreement now? Didn't they have an agreement before this? Yes, but it wasn't in writing. I see. I'll lay two to one. It was Opportunity Smith's idea to put the agreement in writing. Ben Darwin! Howdy, Sheriff! Come on and eat! Evening, Tom! Oh, do let me have your hat, Sheriff. There's some food in the next room. Thanks, Miss Blake, but I can't stay. Oh, there's Jim. Oh. Jim? Well, there's the sheriff. Say, it was mighty kind of you to drop in, Sheriff. Congratulations, Blake. Thanks. Yes, you know my partner, Squint Adrian, don't you? Yep. <laughs> Evening, Sheriff. We just signed a partnership <laughs> agreement. So I hear. Uh, sheriff, do you know Lawyer Smith? Well, uh, of course he does. How are you this evening, Sheriff Darwin? Me? I'm all right. Mary, Lawyer Smith is to have a small share of our claim. Oh? He's to be our legal, um, uh... Your legal uh, advisor. Yeah, that's it. Legal advisor, huh? Uh-huh. Leave it to Opportunity Smith. I trust this visit is purely social, Sheriff Darwin. Does it make any difference to you, Smith? Oh, as a matter of fact, I'm glad you're here. There's something I think you should know. Tell it fast. I've got to be going. Oh, must you leave so soon? Yes, I'm sorry, Miss Blake. We'll step outside with you, Sheriff Darwin. Suit yourself. Good night, Mr. Blake. Good night, Sheriff. Goodbye, Jim. So long, Sheriff, and thanks for dropping in. Good night, all. Good night, Sheriff. We'll be right back, Jim. Come on, Squint. Ah, it sure is a fine moonlit night. Never mind the moonlit night, Smith. What's on your mind? Sheriff, have you heard about anyone who has a grudge against Jim Blake? Well, who'd have a grudge against Jim Blake? I don't know, but I heard indirectly... That he'd claimed land that someone else wanted. If someone else wanted it, why didn't they claim I it? I can't answer that, Sheriff. Of course, there are many reasons why someone might be unable to stake a claim. An Indian. Or a wanted man, for example. Hold on, Smith. Uh, let me ask one question. Yes? Suppose there is someone with a grudge against Jim. Suppose he killed Jim. What would happen to Jim's share of the gold mine? Well, uh, <clears throat> according to the partnership agreement, it would go to Squint Adrian. That's about what I figured. Now get this, Opportunity Smith. You too, Adrian. Don't try to build me up to looking for a mysterious killer. If anything happens to Jim Blake, I'll come looking for you two. Paste that in your hats. Whew. Smith, that didn't go over so good. The sheriff is suspicious. Get up there. We can't go through with our plans. He'll suspect us. Leave it to me, Squint. How can he accuse us of murder if we deliver the Indian killer to him? With Jim's own wife as a witness, huh? <laughs> you leave it to me. The sheriff paid little attention to the lawyer's statement as he rode toward town. He discounted the idea of anyone bearing a grudge against Jim Blake until he saw a white horse on the trail ahead. A man stood beside the horse, examining the ground. As the lawman drew near, the stranger looked up. Then, in the moonlight, Sheriff Darwin saw that the owner of the white horse wore a mask. Oh, there. Uh, oh. Hold it steady. You're covered. Is that the badge of a sheriff or a deputy? Darwin's the name. Sheriff Darwin. Take that mask off. Just a minute, Sheriff. Steady, boy. Take it off or I'll do it for you. Hired gunslinger, huh? Coming to get Jim Blake. I never heard of Jim Blake. No? Well, I reckon you've heard about the two men that hired you to kill him. Now hoist your hands. You're under arrest. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. By following the back trail in the moonlight, the Lone Ranger came to the place where Tonto had fallen. He dismounted to study the ground. Sheriff Darwin, on his way back to town from Jim Blake's party, saw the masked man. He whipped out a gun and said, Now, hoist your hands. You're under arrest. Do you generally arrest people without cause? That mask is cause enough. Sheriff, I came here looking for a friend. Lawyer Smith, huh? Or is it Squint Adrian? My friend's an Indian. His name is Tonto. He fell when his horse stumbled. Now, if you're good at cutting sign, you can verify what I say by looking at the tracks. I ordered you to hoist your hands. Tonto was picked up by two men and taken away in a light wagon drawn by two horses. You think I'm fool enough to believe that? See for yourself. You can't read that much in a trail at night. You can in moonlight, such as this. I ain't fool enough to take my eyes off you. Now do as I say. I'm going to follow that wagon. By Juniper, you can't stand there and defy me. I don't mean to defy you. You put up your hands and get ready to shoot it out with me. My guns will stay in leather unless you take them. Unless I take them. Well, I can do that, too. Careful. I'll show you. <coughs> you. Sorry. Let me go. Are oh, you struggling? Me... I'll get you. I know you'll try. That's why I've got to put a rope on you. You won't rope me. I'll, I'll get free. As soon as I get the noose over your no. head. No, no, you don't. There. That does it. You, you'll hang for this. Why not that? A couple of loops to hold your arms. There. You won't get away with it, stranger. You've got the top hand now. I'm but... not trying to get away with anything. My friend was hurt. He's been taken from here in a wagon. I want to find him. I'll not be stopped by someone who mistakes me for a hired gunslinger. Say, listen, mister. Who are you? What's the difference? You're the first man that's fast enough to knock a gun out of my hand. I'll pick up your gun. You'll get it back when we part company. Come on now. I'll help you to the saddle. You'll have to ride with your arms tied. Ride where? With me. I won't do it. You can sit in your own saddle or ride in front of mine with your legs dangling on one side, your head on the other. All right, doggone it. Help me board. I'll ride. Jim Blake's party had broken up and the guests had ridden back to town. Opportunity Smith drove slowly until he was sure that everyone was well ahead. Then he turned from the trail and circled back toward the Blake cabin. Oh, oh, oh. This is near enough to the house. Step down, Squint. After what the sheriff said, I ain't so sure we'll get by with this. We'll get away with it. I know what constitutes evidence. Now help me drag the Indian from the back. How was he the last time you looked at him? Strong enough to have made trouble if I hadn't had the foresight to gag and tie him. Now, come on, Redskin. There. He can stand up all right. Of course he can. Get out your knife and cut the rope on his ankle so he can walk. All right. I wish there was some way to kill Jim so it'd look accidental. You heard what the sheriff said. He'd suspect us of planning the accident. What in blazes will he suspect if Jim's killed? How can he accuse us if Blake's own wife is the only witness and she's on our side? Cut that ankle rope. I am. Don't leave the rope on the ground. I'll toss the rope in the wagon. Now what? You see that open window in Blake's house? Yeah. The one next to the door. That's it. I'm going into the house. I'll tell Jim and his wife that we decided we'd better come back and warn them. Warn them that someone's after Jim, huh? Yes. You will be right outside that window with this Indian. I'll, when I cough, throw a shot at Blake. I'll shout and point to the window. I savvy. Mary Blake will turn. She'll get a look at the Indian. A quick look. Just before you pull him aside. And you step back and shoot the Indian. There's just one thing. Well... She'll see that he's gagged. She'll see that he has a bandana over part of his face, just like a disguise. Uh, that's so. And I'll rush out to join you. We'll cut the ropes and the gag. You will be a hero for getting Blake's killer. Now, here's the Indian's gun. Uh, be sure you shoot Blake with this gun and the Indian with your own. Now, look here, Smith. Why have I got to be the one to do this? They can only I... hang you once, Squint. But I tell or you... Or should I call you... Jake Arnold of Washoe County. All right. Let's get going. How long 
long you think you can keep me hogtied like this? I'm sorry it's necessary, Sheriff. You're still following the wagon tracks? Yes. I don't know how you can see them from the saddle. Well, experience helps. I've had to do a lot of trailing by moonlight. I think that... Oh, boy, whoa. Oh. Why are you stopping? Teddy Silver, easy. <clears throat> something curious about the tracks. Hmm. There's something darn curious about you and that mask, too. You wanted to shorten the trip, you probably could. You must know who owns a light wagon, perhaps a Syrian. I ain't telling nothing. Oh? It's yourself. Uh, uh, what's curious about the track? From here on, there's a double track. Yeah? The carriage went ahead and came back this far and turned off the trail. It did? Came back this far, you say, and then turned off the trail? Yes. I think the driver is circling back to where he came Wait from. Wait a minute we'll... before you mount. Well? Untie my arms and give me my six guns. <laughs> Won't that put us back where we started? Not by a jugful. When we started, I was against you. Now I'm with you. Oh? That, sir, is owned by Lawyer Smith. He and Squint Adrian were at Jim Blake's house. You spoke of them. If they're circling back there. I want to see about it. I don't want to be hindered by having my arms tied. I can take you there direct. It'll be quicker than following the trail. All right. Sit still. You're going to do what I, ask, what I ask you? You're going to trust me not to turn you down? I can tell when a man is to be trusted. So can I, doggone it. So can I. Hurry up with them knots. We got to get moving. <laughs> Lone Ranger and the sheriff didn't know that the need for haste was even greater than they realized. Jim Blake and his wife didn't know that murder was just a few yards from their home. They sat side by side at a table looking over Jim's newly signed agreement. Oh, I suppose it's all right, Jim, if you say so. Sure it is, honey. I don't mind cutting the lawyer in for a share. We'll need him. And as for Squint getting the claim, why... <laughs> Shucks, he'd do the right thing. Well, it's late... You'd better close the window and I then... thought it'd be a good idea to leave it open and let some of the smoke out. So many of the boys were smoking their pipes. Oh, it's the door. Maybe someone forgot something. Might be Jack Peterson. He's absent-minded. Lawyer Smith. I'm glad you're still up, Jim. May I step in? Well, of course. Come on in. Is anything wrong, Mr. Smith? No, there's nothing wrong yet. Sit down, Jim. I've got to tell you something. Private? No, no. You stay where you are, Mrs. Blake. It'll be better if you hear what I have to say. You look mighty serious. I am. Jim, have you ever made an enemy of a redskin? Me? Well, not that I know of. Why? Think hard. There must be some reason for an Indian to have a grudge against you. Oh, gosh, I don't have to think. I never had anything to do with any redskins. I don't even know any Indians. Maybe you claim land belonging to Indians. I tell you, Jim, these Indians are mighty strange people. Mighty strange. It's hard to understand them. For all you know, you might have staked your claim on land that was at some time used as they did in very good. While Smith sat with Jim and Mary, Squint stood outside the house with Tonto. He was intent on the conversation. He didn't hear the approach of the Lone Ranger and the sheriff as they came to the end of their trail. Tonto, however, heard a signal and the almost imperceptible call of a night bird. He knew that the Lone Ranger was close by. He glanced at Squint, but Squint heard only the voices in the house. Suddenly, strong arms gripped Squint. A firm hand clamped over his mouth. Yes, got Tonto free. Yeah, right. I'll take care of this one. Didn't sound like a horse to me. As I was saying, I went outside with the sheriff. You remember that? Sure. I told him what I'd heard. He wouldn't take me seriously. Squint Adrian will tell you how the sheriff refused to believe me. Do you know the Indian, Mr. Smith? Oh, no, and I wasn't going to say anything about it. I didn't want to alarm you, Mrs. Blake. But when Squint and I were on the way back to town, we saw a campfire not far from the trail. There was an Indian beside it. Really? There aren't any redskins in this community. Oh, no, I know it. We talked it over, Squint and I, and decided to come back here and put you on your guard. Well, I appreciate it. We'll be on the watch. You would better be sure that all your windows are closed. Yeah. <coughs> the door's locked, too. <coughs> yes, the door's locked, too. <coughs> Mr. Smith, have you taken cold? Uh, oh, I, uh, yes, I may have. <coughs> Look, the doorway. Huh? What? What? The door? What do you mean? Yes, the door's opening. Squint! Squint! Hold your fire. Wait a minute, Redskin. Me not hurt you. 
me come after this time? No, no. Smith, it's you. He oh, wait a minute. Listen to me. Squint, where are you? Him not help you now. Him tied no, up. No, don't shoot me. Wait a minute. Please, listen to me. That's the man to kill. That's Jim Blake. Smith, what's the idea? You know all about the plan. You heard us. Get Blake and I'll make it right with you. Oh, what's he saying? Keep quiet. Oh. Uh, what you pay? Anything. You want this fella dead, huh? Then you and Adrian get all the gold mine. Great Scott. We'll give you a share, I promise you. Smith, you and Adrian schemed against me. Why, you double Go on, Indian, shoot them. Get both of them. You've got to. They'll tell the law. I'll pay you. Shoot them. Don't shoot me. He won't shoot anyone. Look. Smith. Good work, Tonto. You played it just right. You're under arrest, Opportunity Smith. What? Sheriff Darwin. I told you what would happen if you schemed against Jim. Stick your hands no, out. No, wait. Let me talk. You talk to plenty. But you ain't told us we'll get from Tonto and Squint Adrian. If that coyote squealed... He didn't have a chance. We came up on him from behind while he was fixing to frame Tonto for murder. He's the murderer. He's already wanted for murder. Save it. We'll get all the facts. Jim, looks like you had a streak of luck when you signed that agreement. And then near signed my death warrant. With Smith and Adrian strung up, you'll be sole owner of your claim. Oh, no, you can't hang me. I didn't commit murder. I know the law. You if can't... you know the law, you know that Adrian will hang for a murder in Washoe. You also know that you're as guilty as he is. For concealing what you know about that him. That squealing coyote. He didn't squeal. Tonto just dropped a couple of remarks before he came in, that's all. He... Hey, where is he? Where's that masked man? We have a friend waiting in camp. Come here. We want to thank you. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Silver. Hey! just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.